let's say we have a grade sheet like you can see here and on our grade sheet we have a bunch of students all separated by their classes as we scroll down now we have 25 or so different classes in our list so each class is assigned a teacher and that teacher needs to add in grades to the quizzes assignments and the final exam now we shared this document as editors for our teachers and they need to go in here and have to scroll all the way down until they find the section that they're in and add in their grades. To make their life a little bit easier, we can create a summary page, as you can see here, where the teacher can go in, find their section quickly, select it, and click on the range, which gets them straight to the first student in their class to add in their grades. In this tutorial, we're going to take two approaches to this. One, we're going to create a two column set of formulas, creating a unique list of classes, followed by creating a link for those classes. And then in our second example, we're going to combine our unique list of classes and put the links directly in there with one giant monster formula. Now there's a link to the starter sheet in the description below. Please make a copy of it so you can play along. It really helps with your learning process. Let's dive in. So if you made a copy of the starter sheet, you should have a Google Sheet that looks something like this. So first we have our summary Google Sheets tab and we'll be adding our unique list of classes here. And once we do that, you'll see an automatic calculation, just a little bonus formula there for you. And then we'll be adding our section links to column D. Once that's done, if you want to continue playing along, we will make our bonus single formula to rule them all in column F2 here. Note on grades, we have all the students for this course separated by their classes. Okay, let's head back to our summary page and dive in. So classes, to get a unique list of classes, we can use the Google Sheets unique function. And now we can go to our grades list and we'll just select this A3 and down a bit. And let's keep it open just in case we add or remove students at a later date. And let's just close it and see what happens first. Okay, so we're almost there, but we've got this weird little gap here. What's going on? Let's go back to our grade sheet and just scroll down a bit. Now, I've separated the grade sheet by a blank space to make it easier for our teachers to see where their section starts and finishes. So that's what this first gap here is being identified as a second unique item in the row. Now, we need to remove that, and we can use this sort function for this. Awesome. So now that we have our unique list of sections, we can use this list to find the row start of each of our sections on our list here. So if I go back to our summary again, over in column D here, what we're going to use to do this is the match function. Now this is only part of the final formula, but let's go through this step first so we know what we're doing. So the first thing match takes is a search key. And now that we've generated our list of unique classes, we can just select our search key to be A2 here. The next parameter is the range. So our argument for that parameter is going to be this range of classes here. So let's just scroll ourselves back up to the top and just go from this range and we'll just put in a colon and an A. Now, if we were to drag this down our sheet to add this formula to all the other values, we're going to have a bit of a problem because this, this will turn to A4, A5, A6. So we can actually lock that in or make it an absolute value by hitting F4 here or adding the dollar signs. Okay, so let's just wrap this match function up first. And we've also got a search type. Now, the search type helps match decide whether it is going to look for the largest value closest to the search key or it's going to look for an exact match. For us, we want an exact value. So let's put, let's type in the zero as it says here. Okay, let's hit, hit enter quickly and see what happens. Yep, sure, we'll do the auto accept. So now we've got a row value that says one and 44. Hmm, I don't think that's 100% correct. Let's have a look, go back to our grade sheet and one is up here for row. And if we go down, we've got 46 here. So we're missing it by two, what's going on? match actually returns the position in the range selected for us the range selected starts at a3 so we need to add two more to include our two header rows what we need to do next is just add plus and two okay let's delete those and 
just double click so we can so we have a proof so we've got now 3 46 and 80 so we should see that each class starts at 3 46 80 114 let's go back and have a look 3 46 80 114 great we're on track we found it our next step is to use this row number and turn it into a hyperlink that will direct us straight to that position an easy way to find a link for this column is just to head back up to the top and what we're going to do here is select this a3 cell and right click it go down to view more cell actions and select get link to this cell now you can see it says link copied to the clipboard so now we have a url copied to our clipboard let's head back over to summary let's zoom in a bit for you it's a bit better and where we've got our match we're going to add the hyperlink function to our formula and here I'm just gonna put a little space in and here I'm going to add a double quotation marks and we're going to add as you can see it requires a URL the URL we copy to our clipboard so I'm gonna hit control shift and V to paste that in and that'll be command shift and V for Mac users and I'll just close the double quotation marks for now now we're not quite done as you can see here we've got the URL it matches this URL at the top here and then we've got the GID so that is going to be the sheet tab ID for grades and then we've got the range A3 so A3 is the top left now we don't want this to be hard coded we want it to be A and then the result from our match plus 2 so let's delete 3 here and we can add an ampersand to concatenate or join our formula to our string to give us a value so let's finish our hyperlink now okay so let's put in a comma now and let's just control enter to get to a new line to make it neater and let's add in our link label which we'll just call section start and then close our brackets cool all right let's hit enter so now when we hover over our link here it tells us where it's going to be and what the value is in that cell so if i click on that they'll direct us straight to here okay so all we need to do now is update this by clicking this little box down the bottom here and dragging it all the way down to the bottom and then we've got our updated links so if i go to section three and click on it it'll take us to section three if i go down to section 21 let's click on it if i go down to section 17 and click on it that'll take us to 17 and section 23 that'll take us to 23 cool all right not too bad but let's hit god mode imagine we just want a list of classes and those list of classes have a hyperlink on them already where our users can just click on the class and navigate straight to their section we can do this by using our sort unique and also our hyperlink and match functions inside an array formula now our array formula allows you to take a range of items instead of individual cell items and carry out calculations on them so let's go in and start with an array formula and we might space this out a little bit to make it easier to read so control enter to the next line and the next thing we can do is add in our hyperlink and match formula so let's type in hyperlink okay and we'll hit control enter again Give yourselves a couple of spaces let's just close out of that for the time being it'll come up with an na no worries but remember we need to get our url first so just so we remember let's go over to here go to a3 right click view more cells and actions click on get links to this cell that gives us our link we can head back to our hyperlink now and in this section here let's just control enter again space space and in double quotation marks add in our Control shift v our hyperlink now remember we don't want the three at the end we're actually going to add our match to it so i'm going to backspace on that three so we've just got a range of at equals a and close off our double quotation marks and just to keep things neat just let me drag this down a bit so you can see let's hit uh, Control enter space space and let's add our ampersand to join or concatenate and then we'll control enter again space space and this time we're going to add in our match just like we did before so we'll type in match 
Now our search key this time isn't going to be A2. It's going to be a unique array of all the classes in our grade sheet that has been sorted. So if you remember how we did that, we went sort and then unique. And then we grabbed the grades. And this is the grades sheet tab. So I'm gonna put an exclamation mark here. And, that's, and that went from A3 to A. And then let's close our brackets for the unique, close our brackets for the sort. Now, because we are using this array formula up here, we can apply an array to this match. So instead of search key, we have a list of search keys. Cool, and then in our next argument, we have our range, which is going to be the same as this one. So it's going to be A3 to A, so it's the range we're searching in. And then we want it to be strict. We want it to only to match exactly. So we'll put a zero in here. And then we're going to close our match function. And remember, we need to add two to it because our data starts on the third row down. So this match is creating an array of all the classes all the way down, and it's combining it to this URL. Awesome. Let's put a comma in, and now we need a link label. So let's hit Control Enter, and a couple of spaces again. Our link label is going to be a unique list of all the classes in our grade sheet. So all we need to do is our sort unique formula again. Unique, great, exclamation mark, A, three, colon, A, close the brackets on our unique, close the brackets on sort. Okay, so at this stage, we'll just press enter and see what happens. Make sure we haven't made any mistakes. Cool, so it looks like we've pretty much generated everything we need and everything seems to be heading to the right location. So we've got this, uh, let's have a look at 40409 and that's getting us to A246. Excellent. Go back, we'll have this 40415 that's getting us to A416. Yep, perfect. But if we scroll down just a little bit, we've got this annoying little NA. What's going on here? Well, do you remember when we did our classes for the first time, we only used the unique function without the sort? It had that annoying little blank space here. Well, when we use the sort, it has sorted the blank to the bottom of the list here. So we want to get rid of that. And we can get rid of this NA function by including an if NA statement inside our array formula. Just on our array formula, we're going to hit Control Enter. And we're going to type in if NA. And then if NA's first argument is going to be the entire formula that we created inside our function here. Let's drag this down a bit. So we're at if NA, so our hyperlink ends here. So we wanna hit control enter there and maybe control enter one more time. And we're going to conclude our NA just here. So if NA has a second argument, which we divide by a comma, and that second argument is what do you want to display in the cell if an NA appears or not applicable appears? For us, we just want an empty cell. So we're just gonna put two double quotation marks in there to display an empty cell. Okay, I think we've got everything now. Let's hit tab and let's scroll down. And now our little FNA error has gone missing. We can just close this formula section here. And now as we click, we're directed straight to the first item in each of the classes for the grade sheet. Okay, that's it. I'd be curious to see what else you might want to use this on. So please let me know in the description below how you might like to use this or how you might like to expand on this formula. Also, please let me know which approach did you like best? The one where we separated things into two columns or one where we made this monster formula for you where everything is done in one giant formula. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please click that like button. And if you want to see more tutorials like this, hit that notification bell so you get a reminder when the next episode comes out. Until next time.